The Old Testament is a wonderful collection of stories, all of which are designed to teach us lessons, some of them positive in the sense in which they are stories that give us examples to imitate or instructions to follow. Some of the stories are negative in the sense in which they show us what happens to people who decide to do it their way instead of God's way, who ignore God's counsel and commandments and uh, ruin their lives and the lives of other people as a result. The important thing about the Old Testament is the stories, and uh, that doesn't mean that there's not truth or authority or commandments, um, <clears throat> but simply that when God communicates with us, he chooses generally to communicate with us through stories. Uh, instead of giving us a law book, um, he gave us a book of stories. He could have given us a law book, but he chose instead to tell us stories. And uh, the Old Testament is rich when you read it that way. And uh, ask yourself the question, what does this story have to teach me about God, about the world, about other people, about myself, about how I should or should not live my life? One of the things, however, that often happens to people when they read the Old Testament is that they kind of get lost in the stories and they miss the larger story. And there is a larger story. The larger story is about the movement from paradise, which was created for human beings, given to them as a gift, this whole wonderful world, but God said, it's all yours, just go out and enjoy it that human beings lost as a result of their own determination to do it their way rather than God's way. And having lost that world that God created for them, they find themselves now living in a world for which they are ill-prepared, a world for which they were not created, not designed, a world that God never wanted them to have to experience. And... Um, um, all of this is, is designed to help people understand that we don't belong in this world. It's not the world we were made for, and uh, that this is not a permanent condition, that God is going to reestablish his original plan. And when he does, we can be a part of that if we want to. And uh, those who don't want to will not be forced to be a part of that they will be allowed to obliterate from the presence of God. Um, when you see how the whole, all the different stories fit together in the larger story of God and his purposes, then the whole thing begins to make more sense. So in an effort to do that, let's take a look at uh, a rough chronology of the Old Testament and get some sense of how some of the bigger stories fit together. Now, the Old Testament um, begins with the story of creation. And this is what we might call prehistoric in the sense in which there are no historical records that tell the story or corroborate it. Um, language, writing simply doesn't go back that far. And so the story that is told of the creation is a story that was written down probably somewhere around 1200 or so BC, but um, the story that it's telling about goes back many hundreds and thousands of years before that and could go back a whole lot longer than that. The fact is we simply don't know. The biblical story simply says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It makes no effort whatsoever to tell us whether the beginning was a thousand years before Christ, 10,000 years, a hundred thousand, a million years before Christ. We just don't know. Um, so in a sense, um, we could say that the Old Testament chronology goes back to the very beginning, but we could also say it goes back to the beginning of writing because the Old Testament, of course, is a written document. 
So <clears throat> in that sense, it really begins somewhere around 1400 or so uh, BC, somewhere in that range. We're not entirely sure, but uh, somewhere around there, God called a man by the name of Abraham. And he said to Abraham, I want to enter into a special kind of relationship with you. I want you to be my man, and I will be your God, and I will bless you if you will be faithful to me. Um, you and all your descendants will be blessed, and through your descendants, all the earth will be blessed. Are you willing to do that? And Abraham said, yes, I am. And so God entered into this special kind of relationship with Abraham, I think recognizing that um, it was simply impossible to enter into this kind of relationship with everybody all at once. And um, Abraham became the first of God's chosen people. In other words, the first Jew, the first Hebrew. Um, God promised Abraham that he would inherit the promised land someday, but it didn't happen during Abraham's lifeline, lifetime. Instead, Abraham's descendants wound up in Egypt where they were slaves for hundreds of years. And when finally they were set free from that slavery under the leadership of Moses, in an event known as the Exodus, they headed out of Egypt and back to that land that God had promised to Abraham. This probably took place somewhere around 1200 or so BC. Um, the people settled the land. They uh, pushed out the people who were already there, who had migrated into the land and uh, took it over as their own. This is the land of Canaan, a land that uh, God described as a good land overflowing with milk and honey. And they settled there. Um, and this was the period uh, of time known as the period of the judges when Israel was ruled by a series of men and women who were known as judges, who were kind of part prophet, part priest, part king, um, part wise man, and um, this went on until around a thousand or so when the people wanted a king of their own. There was a first king, of course, King Saul, but that didn't work out quite so well. King David was really the archetypical king. And uh, he was followed, of course, by his son, King Solomon. And Israel really hit its high point, its glory years, around 1000 BC during the reign of David and Solomon. After David and Solomon's reign, um, things didn't go quite so well. And uh, the story uh, that is told in First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles uh, is a story of unfaithful kings and uh, prostituting people and uh, uh, unreliable priests and um, Israel not doing well at all. Uh, in a series of uh, downward spirals punctuated by some occasional revivals. Um, this sad state of affairs went on for hundreds of years until Israel was became prey to a group of uh, conquering empire builders named the Assyrians. The Assyrians conquered the northern empire and destroyed, or the northern kingdom of Israel and destroyed it. The southern kingdom held out against them, but eventually fell to the Babylonians under King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, under King Nebuchadnezzar, they were deported from Israel, and many of their people were taken to Babylon. The city was the city of Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was destroyed. This was the pride of Israel, so it was a great national humiliation. The people were uh, forbidden to return to their city and to rebuild it for 70 years. Uh, this is the period of time during which you have the prophets uh, writing, uh, warning the people to begin to listen to God's voice or else. Uh, the Babylonians were followed in turn by another empire, the Medo-Persian Empire, and uh, they ruled and um, held the Israelites in subjugation for another long period of time to be replaced by the Greeks, initially under Alexander the Great. And uh, this Greek uh, rulership, this Greek kingdom, um, this Greek empire was uh, the boot that was on their neck uh, right up to the close of the writing of the Old Testament around 400 or so BC. 
Now, there are some books that were written during this period of time that tell the, some of the stories about what happened to Israel during this period of time between the close of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New Testament, but they're generally not included in the Bible. They're simply good history books that people like to read. All of this uh, end time um, this um, turmoil at the end was predicted by the prophets. They warned the people of Israel that this would happen to them. Uh, but during this period of time, one prophet kind of stands out uh, from all the others, and, and that's the prophet Daniel. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, uh, is um, in many ways a, a figure of Jesus. Um, and uh, he is um, the one who tells in great detail what the future of Israel is going to be and also tells in great detail uh, where and how and when the Messiah would be born and um, what that would mean to Israel. Keep in mind that Daniel was prophesying this stuff something like 600 BC or thereabouts. Um, so this is um, many hundreds of years before the events actually took place. And uh, as you'll see in the next podcast, which covers one specific, just one, of Daniel's many prophecies, um, Daniel uh, is very clear about the history of the world and what will happen. And he covers a period of uh, a couple thousand years, uh, reaching right up to our own day. So Daniel's a fascinating book to study. Daniel comes out of this turbulent period towards the end of the Old Testament. Well, I hope that gives you some sense of chronology and how the pieces fit together. Um, read the stories and uh, enjoy the stories because uh, there's a lot to learn from them.